you know, there's always that moment where we have to say thank you. Because if we don't, next year we won't be here. And it's really important to always be grateful to those that help us do what we do each and every day. So on behalf of the uh, Resource Conservation District, Ventura County, and on behalf of Food Share, who serves 75,000 people, where the ag industry sits at the backbone of making that possible, over 10 million pounds of food were delivered to hungry people in Ventura County. And of that 10 million pounds of food last fiscal year, six and a half million pounds came from the Ventura County agricultural industry. I wanted to share that because lots of times people ask the question, so what's the connection with the Resource Conservation District and the ag industry? And that story is still one of the best kept secrets here in Ventura County, that our ag industry gives tirelessly. They don't do it for recognition, certainly not to be in the paper. It's not even for a tax write-off. They do it because they truly care about the community, the environment, the land, our economy, and most of all, our people. And that's what we're here today to celebrate and talk about. So with that, I have a list of special friends that are here, our dignitaries, and if you'll do me a favor and hold your applause, and as your name is called, please just stand, and then we can offer our thanks for them making the time to be here and provide their support to our nominees and our panel today. So we have Amanda Bogie of Assemblyman Jeff Gorell's office, Henry Gonzalez, our California Ag Commissioner of Ventura County, representing Supervisor Long's office, Martin Hernandez, Executive Director of CoLab, Lynn Jensen, our Ventura County Clerk Recorder, Mark Lunn, from Supervisor Foy's office, Brian Miller, we have also with us Fire Chief Chad Cook, Fire Chief Daryl Ralston, Brenda Farias, from, uh, who is the Director of Ventura County Santa Barbara Farm Service Agency. Of course, our Ventura County Farm Bureau is represented by President Josh Pinkerton. Uh, we also have Fire uh, County Ventura uh, Fire Captain Brendan Ripley, our Ventura County uh, Sheriff's Office is being represented by Tim Hagel. From Supervisor Park's Office, Damon Wing. For the Central Coast District Director for California Women for Ag, Jeanette Lombardo. President of our Ventura County Chapter, California Women for Ag, Marta Alvarez. And Rob Roy at the Ventura County Ag Association. Thank you so much for representing your communities. Today's lunch is hosted by the Resource Conservation District, and the reason that, and they say there's no such thing as a free lunch, but today there was for you, and that's thanks in part to our sponsors, Montecito Bank and Trust, Marty Brook is here with us today, Community President. We also have our friends at Robber Bank, and we have an entire table, don't we, Virginia? Thank you for that. Farm Credit West is also a supporting sponsor. Let's give them a round of applause. You got to say thank you for a free lunch, right? Not so bad. <laughs> so now it's really time to chat. But before we do that, uh, we wanted to bring up Mike Mobley. Mike Mobley is the chair of the Resource Conservation District. And he's going to share a little bit about the Resource Conservation District. Many of you know and work intimately with the RCD. But there are a few new friends here that would probably like to know a little bit more. So Mike, come on up. Thank you, Barney. So, uh, fortitude. I like that. I could use a little bit of that right now. Hey, um, so let me live, give you a little bit, uh, little bit of information about the RCD. Uh, our official name is the Ventura County Resource Conservation District, and it serves as a liaison for natural resource conservation between landowners, regulatory agencies, and municipalities. As a special district organized under the California Public Resource Code Division 9, the RCD has the authority to carry out its goals and its objectives. Priority, 
Priority RCD issues include the following. Ag preservation, open space advocacy, outreach and education on water resources, watershed protection, watershed restoration, control and or education, or excuse me, control and or eradication of invasive species, as well as evaluating the potential impacts of loss of wildlife habitat, maintaining air quality, and researching and promoting alternative, me alter excuse me, alternate methods of energy. Bonnie. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike, for sharing about. So if, when you think about all the things that Mike just talked about, you're going to hear living examples of that here with our panel. Uh, our next friend that's going to just share a couple of words on behalf of Ventura County Ag is uh, none other than our Ag Commissioner himself. So Henry Gonzalez, please come on up. Four more years. Four more years. The Board of Supervisors recently reappointed me for four more years. Just wanted to share that and uh, get your attention. I want to uh, thank Marty for, for the opportunity to come here and say a few words and maybe tell a few jokes, but uh, it, it's an honor for me to come here and, and uh, address you folks. You know, as a regulator, I always like that the RCD always touts that they are non-regulatory. Actually, I'm jealous because I always feel that Marty's staff gets a, a warmer reception than my staff. <laughs> but as, agri as agricultural commissioner and as an agriculturalist, I really appreciate the work that the RCD does because they, they protect and conserve ag's resources so that ag can continue between conserving and protecting water and soils primarily, uh, that is the essence of agriculture. Without that, there would be no agriculture. And the RCD, this is the work they do. Now, I thought Mike was going to steal all of my thunder because I wanted to share that the RCD was created back after the, the Dust Bowl of the 1930s and the loss of all of those uh, topsoils back then. And this, was, and this was back when the government actually did something together, which was they enacted the, the uh, soil conservation districts. Now, one thing that hasn't changed is that folks knew that government from afar, government from Washington, D.C., doesn't work that well. And so through state statutes and through local governance of the local board, we're able to have RCDs that are governed at the local level, which that is the best and most effective way of governing, I believe. Now, as, as, as an agriculturalist, I really appreciate the work of the RCD. I feel that I could do the work of the RCD. I, I would want to be Marty's boss, of course, but <laughs> I, I could do that. But the, the, the work of the RCD is really important. They're not only protecting and conserving soils and water that are key to agriculture, but they're also providing education. You know, they go with uh, folks like Vic out there. They provide their, their field expertise, their technological knowledge, and they don't just leave it there. They, they impart it to whoever they do business with. All of those projects, those individuals that, that they work with, those owner-operators, they, they learn from that information, too. And, and that's also a big benefit of what the RCD does. They also help us not only conserve but to protect the soils. And you know, we have a lot of issues now with nutrient contamination, pesticide contamination, saltwater intrusion, and the work that the RCD does really helps us to deal with those and manage those. And, and that's probably something that we're going to continue to deal with in the future. 
I think that here in Ventura County, we're blessed to have Marty and his staff in a very active RCD. The board is very active. We're blessed to have them here in Ventura County. We are still a big ag county. We're also blessed to have so many individual producers, farmers, that they're conservationists all the time. They have to conserve their soils. They have to conserve the water because otherwise they're not going to be able to farm, and they know it. They are the best and biggest conservationists there are, and I wish other folks knew that. Now, the RCD is kind of like the Ag Commissioner's Office in that we don't get a lot of government assistance. We get some, but for the most part, I know Marty has to do the same thing I do. We've got to find funding wherever we can find it, and, and we do. One more page. Well, I have to say that we're also blessed for the food we just ate. This is the ultimate product of all of that conservation, of all of that farming. We just ate some of it. And I think we're blessed in that these individuals that you're here about today and Marty's folks are going to help us to continue to produce food into the future so that our children, their children, not only here in Ventura County, but to all the places in the world that we ship our food to, are going to continue to have a good, healthy supply of food. And for that, I want to take my hat off to Marty and all the farmers in the room. Thank you. So how are you feeling about now? I mean, you're thinking about how we all connect the dots. Now it's time to have the conversation before we uh, stand up and say and recognize this year's uh, not just the nominees, but the winner of our Stewardship Award. We're going to spend some time talking with those folks that Henry just spoke about. We're going to get to hear directly from them what their thoughts are and what their visions are. So our panel speakers at this time, we've got this nice little table up on a stage for you. If you'll come up to the table at this time and get yourselves good and comfy, just water up here for you. And while our panel speakers are coming up, I want to introduce and invite to come up in just a moment our moderator for today. So as we were thinking about the perfect moderator, we found the right person that was standing right in front of us. Doug Nelson is, uh, I think, a great snapshot of Ventura County Ag. He's a bit of a hybrid, right? So by day, amazing architect with Main Street Architects for the last 15 years. And if you want to know anything about the business or what's happening in Ventura and across the county, it's a good chance Doug knows and is probably part of that work as well. He and his wife, Anita, have been married 30 years, I believe, and about 12 years ago, they, decided, they made a decision to go back to the family farm, and so they have been farming as well for the last 12 years. And so you've got this hybrid of a person by day working the business, and at every other hour of the day, I'm sure, care and keeping the land. So we're very excited to have Doug Nelson as our moderator today. He's going to introduce your panel speakers, and he's going to take us through this conversation with them on sustainability. Doug Nelson, come on up. Well... I'm still not sure how Bonnie twisted my arm to do this, but I think we're going to have fun. As an RCD board member, uh, we talked about this at our last board mem meeting, and uh, the more we talked about having a conversation with producers of different ilk, I mean, the whole idea here you're going to hear about is ag producers, ag industry folks, far and wide, covering a lot of different bases in the ag industry. So without any further ado, I would like to have each one of them give us a, just a quick uh, thumbnail sketch of who you are and what you do, uh, primarily what you grow or what you raise, how your produce or product commodity uh, is grown and how it gets to market. Rich, let's start with you. Good. Can everybody hear me? Okay. I'm, R I'm Rich Atmore. And in 1979, I started working on a cattle ranch in the foothills above Ventura 
for Rocky Esparza and Toots Aregi. And eventually I bought Rocky Esparza out in 1988, Toots Aregi in 1995, and now I'm the owner-operator of RE Cattle Company. We provide stewardship for approximately 7,000 acres in the foothills above Ventura. I'm proud to be a cattle rancher, and I'm proud that we ate beef here today. Thanks. <laughs> Underwood, and uh, we, we have two farming operations. One, we sell directly to the public through farmers markets, uh, two produce stands. We have UPIC and um, educational tours. We have about uh, 40 to 50,000 kids that come out to the farm every year that uh, we tour around the farm and give them an educational, uh, um, educational look at agriculture. And we offer a summer camp, and we just finish our uh, Harvest Festival in October. We also uh, farm vegetables, uh, primarily jalapeno peppers. Uh, this year we grew uh, 1,400 acres of jalapeno peppers, and it all goes to Hui Farm Foods to make uh, sriracha sauce. So be sure and eat a lot of hot sriracha sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Phil McGrath, and uh, I am solely devoted to direct marketing. The direct marketing program in California started in 78. I took over my family's direct marketing, uh, farmer markets, roadside stand, uh, and everything else included in 92. And from 92 to 95, I had so many customers down in Los Angeles ask me if this is organic that I finally said, I'm going organic. So <laughs> that was really what prompted me to uh, go organic, and I've been organic since 95. Um, we really cater to uh, a lot of restaurants, uh, farmer markets, roadside stand. We have a community-supported ag program. I think you have one, too. Uh, Craig and I have a lot in common. Um, so I'm going to pass it on. Oh, you got one. Yeah. Can everyone hear me in the back? Policeman can hear me in the back. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Josh Pinkerton. I'm a third generation family farmer that farms on the east end of the city of Ventura. We farm about 150 acres of avocados and about 100 acres of lemons. We market our avocados through both the Calavo and Mission Packing Houses and our lemons through Satacor Lemon Association, which is a Sunkist affiliate. Our operation would not be a success without the partnership we have with our packing houses. Once the fruit goes off our property, it's our job to get it to the packing house or have the packing house pick it up from us, and then it's the packing house's decision where that fruit is going to be ultimately distributed. The packing house is going to base this decision on a complicated and in-depth uh, model of global market conditions. And I'm just raising this point right now because it's a fairly sophisticated model. And a lot of the times, the people I meet, I don't think they really understand um, when they're learning about agriculture for the first time how sophisticated it is. And it's a lot more complicated than just taking our fruit down the street. Although in Ventura County, that has its own complications. But we'll save that discussion for some other time. Um, our fruit ends up in just about anywhere and everywhere as far as markets, from the local markets to the regional markets to the state, federal, and in international markets with big markets in Asia and Japan. Uh, my name is Steve Gill, and I've got several operations in Ventura County here. Rio Farms is our farming entity that we grow uh, celery and cabbage. The celery is primarily marketed through um, three major shippers, uh, Dole, Duda, TNA, uh, nationally, internationally, celery. There's a lot of celery grown in the county here. <clears throat> we also grow a lot of cabbage for um, processors, and uh, we have year-round operations of cabbage that we ship to uh, operations uh, mainly on the west coast but it some goes into the midwest and, and northeast uh, the other operations that i have here is uh, gills onions uh, we're the largest uh, processor of fresh onions um, in the united states and uh, <clears throat> we distribute nationally to um, food service companies and we have direct uh, uh, accounts uh, mcdonald's is one of our uh, customers uh, on the West Coast and Midwest, and we service about half of their system with uh, uh, red onions and, and 
sliced onions for their different hamburgers. Uh, I'll have a little story to tell about our sustainability program in a little bit. Hi, I'm Monica Howling, Casey Howling's daughter. We have a 125-acre greenhouse operation in Camarillo where we grow mainly tomatoes. Uh, we do a few cucumbers. Uh, we sell and market our own tomatoes, and we're working on getting it as direct to the store as we can um, through cutting out some of the wholesalers just to uh, yeah, get the best product to you guys and keep it as fresh. Wow. As promised, a, a really incredible, diverse panel. As an ag producer myself, I have to say that um, whenever we are out and about in the county at various uh, ag meetings of one sort or another, whenever those two words, sustainability and stewardship, pop up, I guarantee you it always seems like there's a little bit of uncomfortable kind of, well, what are those warm and fuzzy words all about? I guarantee you, whenever we ever get to a point where people start asking, well, what is the definition of sustainability or what is the definition of stewardship, I guarantee you that you get different definitions from every producer in the room. Everybody has an opinion. But one of the things that is interesting about uh, what is up here on the panel as far as panel members is that they represent the industry of ag. And what they do and what they just describe with great passion, because, I mean, you can see that the passion is all about not just being here for another five or ten years and then leaving Ventura County. Every one of these people, and I include myself, want to still be in the farming business 10, 20 years ago, ahead, 50 years from now, and hopefully 100 years and beyond. So think about that today when we are are. I'm asking you these questions because that, to my way of thinking, is truly what those key operative words of sustainability and stewardship are all about. And there's also that other third, that F word that we were talking about, fortitude, right? <laughs> but anyway, let's get to the first question. And I, I would like to start at the other end of the, the table with uh, Monica. And Monica, if you wouldn't mind just giving me your take on the fact that we are now in a time and place in our country where there is much attention paid to the environment, and in particular, how we care for our land. Growers have been the original stewards of the land. Why is that true in your opinion, and how has it remained the same, and how is it different in terms of how you folks work at Howling Tomatoes? Okay, um, I think a good place to start is we have 125 acres, and that accounts to 3,000 acres worth of field-grown tomatoes. So right there, we're already um, trying to use our land as wisely as possible. Um, we came down 16 years ago um, just as a normal greenhouse grower, my dad did. Um, wasn't really too concerned about the environment at that phase. And now, um, about five years ago, he really noticed he needed to make a change, and so um, the way we're using our water now so that we can use it as efficiently as possible and save as much land, um, just with our electricity and the way we're using it and generating it. Um, as a greenhouse grower, we do use the land differently than a field farmer, so it's a little bit hard to say on that point because um, we're not working the land. But we definitely, with a greenhouse, are able to maximize the production we're getting on the space we're using, which I think is where... Um, farming is headed um, definitely to use land as wisely as possible. And one of the interesting things, and I'm glad that you're sitting next to Steve, because your two operations probably have more of what is considered an uh, environmental footprint than just about anyone else in the county. And, and Steve, could you uh, elaborate a little bit more on, on how that footprint relates to that question, I guess? On our <coughs> farming operations or my Gills Onions operation? Well, well both, yeah, actually, because uh, they're, they're both connected, obviously. Yes, they are. Um, for us, you know, the, 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 on the land part, we have to manage all the inputs to be as efficient as we can, and all of us at this table have the same issue um, with ma ma managing water and, and, and controlling our costs. And, you know, for example, we have a, a program on our ranch where we monitor the soil moisture so we know when to irrigate and it's monitored through iPads and computers right now for the ranch manager so uh, we know water is a major issue in the county so and it's expensive and, and 
then switching over to uh, the Gills Onion side, we we um, you know, we farm about 3,000 acres of onions in California, and and we manage all our water with through drip irrigation on all the farms and farmers that we deal with. So we we save probably an, an acre foot of water. So that's a lot of water uh, that we save on our on our operations. So that's kind of uh, one of the areas we focus in. But inputs are the critical because we're on a free market system. There's no guarantees what we're going to get on the other side. So we have to be as low cost as we can be. And that's for all of us here at the table. Right. Exactly. How about you, Josh, as a avocado grower? What, what, what's your What's your big sure. take on that? Just real quick, I wanted to answer your question about stewards of the land, and then I'll jump in to what Steve is talking about. As far as the stewards of the land, I do think that statement is generally true. Historically speaking, for the fact that if you look all over the county, um, and the fact that we have all these farmers and ranchers um, that are productive and successful farmers farming on the soil that we are, um, none of this would be possible if the previous generations were not being stewards of the land. And Commissioner Gonzalez mentioned this in his opening remarks, so I wanted to clarify that. But then, also along those lines, I think it would be somewhat disingenuous to historically look back and say there never were abuses, because I know my grandfather's age, for instance, um, they f the use of water um, was not as uh, responsible as it is today. Um, I know from reading history books, there were some chemicals that were used in 1950 um, that we know now are um, no longer sustainable. But the fact is, it is 2012, and I think it's interesting to look how radically different the agricultural landscape is compared to 1950. Do I still have time to address the other part of the question, well, or do you want me to pass it over? Well, if you pass it over to Phil, please, because um, Bill, Bill's got um, another, as a, as a row cropper, you've got a, a, another group of challenges that you, you're dealing with, too. Yeah, and I just want to kind of feed off what he just said. My dad loved DDT. <laughs> no joke. He really did. He thought it was great. I, um, it's just how things evolve. Uh, in the 50s, I don't believe any of our forefathers were trying to be bad farmers by using more water or using chemicals they didn't know. Um, it, it's sustainability and stewardship is an evolving uh, process, and um, I, I think there truly should be gold stars for farmers that try, at least try and do more and more sustainable activities. I, I can't tell you how many people appreciate the fact that we go to all these restaurants, we get a bunch of reclaimed used vegetable oil, and we make biodiesel out of it, and we use all our tractors on biodiesel. We get green waste from L.A. Ventura County. We have a compost operation on our farm. These are things that may sound special, but honestly, they were doing this stuff before, too. I, my dad used to always talk about using the manure to uh, fertilize the ground, to grow the alfalfa, to feed the cattle. To it, We're kind of taking old ideas, making them new, and then hopefully working with them some more. There's more on that, but I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Yeah. <clears throat> well, trying to define sustainability is a little difficult. If you're just defining it to the consumer, they would say it's either organic or it's conventional. Sustainability doesn't mean a whole lot to them because they think they understand organic. When it comes to stewardship, there's, it, as Phil said, it's evolving. It's a conflict because stewardship in the public's mind um, they want to define stewardship as far as what the farmer can and cannot do. And so there's, there's conflict back and forth. We think, we think we know what's right for the land. The public think they know what's right for the land. And as has been mentioned, um, maybe we always haven't been the best stewards, not because we intentionally did it, but because we didn't know. And I can remember when I first started farming, uh, arriving at the end of the row with a cloud of dust uh, of DDT toxaphene swirling around me, and thank goodness we don't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, as ranchers, we have to utilize renewable and sustainable resources to feed cattle. So in a lot of ways, we're a farmer too, because we have to raise a grass crop every year, 
It takes about 25 acres per animal unit in the county of Ventura with the type of habitat we have here to raise 1,000 pound unit of beef. So the taking care of the grass has gone on for generation after generation and I'm really lucky because I got to work for Rocky Esparza and Tutsaregi and they had 105 years experience taking care of the habitat that I now provide stewardship over and, and I got to work with them for one guy for eight years for Rocky and 10 years with Toots and although they were different in many ways when it came to taking care of the land it was so important and that's what I try and instill upon my kids is if you overgraze and if you do things for just economic means alone you'll end up hurting yourself and your bottom line at the end of the day because you'll hurt your grass crop and you'll hurt your seed bank and, and, and you'll hurt the environment. And one of the reasons we're out here is not for the money because we'd be in town doing something else if it was just for the money. We're out here because we love living on the ranch and we want to take care of it. We appreciate the habitat. We work with the wildlife. It's so important. We put in escape ramps in our water troughs so birds and squirrels can get out. We provide, we develop water so that not just for the, for, for the uh, livestock, but also for the wildlife. And we try to maintain all those things and create a balance. And one thing that my predecessors told me, they said, boy, no matter what you do, work as hard as you can to leave this land in better shape than when you got it. And that's what I'm trying to teach my kids. I'm glad that we're uh, videotaping this. I think the general public needs to listen to what's being said here because this is part of what's needed in the County of Ventura to uh, have the general public truly appreciate what the ag producers actually do. The description here of caring for the land is, is obviously a very passionate subject. And with regard to the sustainability word, uh, the, the, the next question kind of, I guess, goes back to the importance of long-term sustainability as it relates to uh, valuing the importance of ag still staying around Ventura County in another 50 to another 100 years from now. So for you and your company, and I'm going to, Monica, again, uh, direct this to you to start with, for, for you and, and your company at Howling, how do you bring together the, what is sometimes referred to as the triple bottom line? That's a people, planet, and profit, the all-important P word there. Uh, offer specific project um, and plans and examples of some of the work that you do at Howling along those lines? Yeah. Well, to start with the people, we employ uh, just over 450 people from the area, so there's our people. Um, for our planet, we're trying to do as much as we can um, just to protect it. And my dad started looking at it and saying, shoot, like I've got three daughters and I can't just walk away and leave it like this. So he wanted to um, better it. And as you said down there, um, that we, there, then that I myself um, bring it another level. So what we've started, we've got a five acre solar panel um, over top of our water reservoir. And then we um, have just installed a cogeneration unit. Um, we're working on another one, and hopefully by the end of the year, a third one. The one we've got running right now is uh, producing 4.4 megawatts, where we uh, run our lights at night. And um, we're working then to return that back to the grid. Um, all of our heating that is produced from the cooler where the tomatoes are stored then is brought back to heat the uh, water tanks so that we heat the greenhouse at night with that. Um, and all the water that's used uh, to feed the plants, any runoff from that, um, any runoff from the top of the greenhouse is then recycled and reused. So we're reusing 90% of our water um, along with the water from the reservoir and working just to be as sustainable and um, continue to be as innovative as possible. And, and Monica, and, we just assume that you're making money out there? Yes, and then with the profit. <laughs> If the tomato market was up, that would help a little bit, but um, yeah, selling tomatoes and then in the end we're hoping with the return from our cogeneration unit and selling back to the grid that we'll um, then start making a profit off of that. Thank you. Steve? Uh, in Ventura County here, we employ about 500, a little over 500 people in all the operations that we have, and uh, so we do have a sizable workforce in the county. Uh, that we employ, well, and we farm in other counties also, but specifically for Ventura County. And, um, you know, we one of the things that we did at Gill's Onions there is we take all our onion waste and uh, we convert it into elect electricity with uh, anaerobic digestion and hydrogen fuel cells. We power our plant with about 
25 percent of the power that we make on our that we used to take to the fields and spread it and that was not a sustainable option for us and it was if i didn't do anything about it i would probably be having to move to a different county um, so we i figured out what to do and be able to stay here in the county you know, with my operation there and i couldn't afford to move it anyway because the capital cost of moving an operation the size we have is just was cost prohibitive so that would have obviously put me out of business or a different business um, on the sustainability side uh, there's a lot of competitive land issues the county's getting smaller all the time for the farmers um, with regulations to deal with uh, um, all the county issues and state issues uh, there's a lot of pressure on the ground the strawberry industry is getting quite large in the area in raspberry so there's a lot of ground pressure on our operations so we see the vegetable side of it being pressurized pretty high for either you get into the strawberry business raspberry business or it's putting a lot of pressure on the vegetables vegetable guys so um this is this is mean, Steve. You're, you're going to have to adapt in some fashion, and then the yeah, in the there's future. Probably, there'll be ways to do it. We don't know what they are yet, but the innovators that we are, <laughs> will figure it out. Right, you know, exactly. that's just the way it is. The unknowns they're there every day. So um, that's what I see, you know. But um, Ventura County is a great area to farm in, and my great grandfather settled here in 1880, along with some of the older families. We go back a long ways, and. And uh, Monica's family uh, owns the property that my great grandfather originally settled on. So well, I keep an eye on what's going on over there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I farm across the street also. Comes around full circle. Great. Thank you, Steve. I wanted to go ahead and answer this question by sharing with everyone a personal story. When I meet people for the first time and they find out I'm a farmer, without a doubt, the number one most popular question I get is, oh, do you farm organically? And my response is no, we don't consider ourselves organic farmers. We don't label our fruit from Pinkerton Ranch as organic, but we use organic practices such as integrated pest management. And then the conversation proceeds to end up with, oh, okay, so you're a conventional grower. And I respond, <coughs> what does that mean? And so usually after about two minutes of back and forth um, with both people in the conversation, myself and whoever, having no idea what conventional means, um, and I actually wanted to, I don't want to waste anybody's time right here asking everybody what conventional means, but when everyone's leaving here today, I'll spend a few minutes asking yourself what conventional means in Ventura County. The closest thing I can think of is maybe a 1950s black and white photograph of an orchard. I have no idea. So the conversation goes on, and I mention what we do at Pinkerton Ranch is we try to take a combination of the best, most efficient, and responsible ways of farming for multiple schools. We use integrated pest management, which that could be a technical term for this group. It's a way to control pests through predatory bug control. But in tandem, we will also, on average, spray Agrimac on parts of our property about once every two years, even though parts of our property never see pesticides. When we're planting new avocados, technically, we are sustainable farmers in the sense that we're putting down nitrogen-rich cover crops to stabilize the soil, minimize erosion, and also inject and make the soil healthy with natural nitrogen. And one thing that we've also been stepping up um, for the past few years at Pinkerton Ranch is we've been grinding up a lot of our dead avocado trees that have been killed by root rot, turning it into mulch, keeping all those inputs on the farm, spreading the mulch out, on parts of a property where it's apl applicable to minimize erosion and also to minimize our herbicide application. And one could technically say that's from the biointensive school of farming as far as keeping inputs on the farm in a closed system. 100% of our irrigation is now through micro sprinklers. And also, um, in the past few years, the packing houses have been promoting the GAP program, which is a tool that farmers use to help with transparency track food safety, and also um, push us towards sustainability in following best management practice guidelines. Thanks, Josh. Phil? Boy, um, that word sustainability keeps coming back. And uh, I, I think everybody here and any farmer in this room knows that you're constantly being quizzed on that. Um, people, profit, planet, uh, it is 
I'm lucky. I'm <laughs> farming in the Oxnard Plains. You know, it's just one of the easiest, perfect climate, perfect soil. So it's not that difficult for me to farm organically. It really isn't in an area like this. I uh, try and plant what's in season. I most of our stuff is on drip too, but we use sprinklers and still a little bit of furrow irrigation. Um, so the planet, yeah, I think I get lots of recognition for being certified organic. Uh, people, I'm going to quote John Chris. A couple of months ago, they had uh, an ag uh, uh, farm worker uh, summit and dinner. And I found out then that the average farm worker in this county makes $23,000 a year, and the average rent in this county is 18000 so you can do the math there. I think if there's anything, any way we can raise the price of food, it would go to the farm workers because they're, uh, that's probably the least sustainable, mm -hmm. I know for me. I try to pay my workers a little bit more than what is average. I think average is like 870 in this county per hour. Um, but uh, the last one, profit, uh, me. <laughs> profit. Uh, there's good years and bad years. Uh, you, usually we break even, but there's been many years we don't make money. There's some years we do. Um, I try and keep that old saying, you know, I don't put, or uh, what is it, uh, a lot of eggs in the basket. So I've got strawberries, I've got vegetables, I've got flowers. And we're always trying to make money on something. We're losing some money on something else. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Great. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. I'm pretty passionate about ag land preservation. When I first started farming with my dad in 1968, most of the farmers that I met told me that uh, don't bother because in 10 years the whole county will look like Orange County. <clears throat> but around 1970, uh, Kaiser Etna tried to develop uh, 10,000 10, acres that they owned in the Las Posas Valley, and a group of farmers and local community activists um, disagreed with that plan. And we managed to convince the Board of Supervisors over the course of a year that it should stay in ag. And I think that was the beginning of a change in attitude in Ventura County that recognized that ag land is a valuable asset and the ag industry is important to the county. I think the Two biggest threats to agriculture in the long run is water and, and labor. Water, um, almost all of the aquifers on the Oxnard Plain, the Las Brosas Valley, even in the Santa Clara Valley, are threatened with overdraft. And we're uh, working on coming up with management plans to try and, and make sure we don't uh, exhaust those resources. Uh, labor, um, <clears throat> I've been told that um, it requires uh, one, one man per 20 acres of citrus, one man for 10 acres of vegetables. It requires two and a half men for every acre of raspberries and strawberries. So you can see as those industries expand in Ventura County, it puts increasing pressure on the labor supply. And where, where are those um, skilled people going to come from? Because it's not unskilled labor. They grew up on the farm. They learned. Uh, they learned how to work, they learned how to work hard, they have the skills from working on a farm, and uh, where is that labor supply going to come from? It's not going to come from the cities, um, it's not, it's not going to come from kids who've grown up working with computers and uh, cell phones, um, they don't have the skills and they don't have the work ethic, and that applies both to field workers as well as uh, management and ag. So I think, um, you know, we're going to have to certainly invest in massive uh, uh, research to develop mechanical harvesting of all different kind of crops. And we certainly need to think about how we're going to uh, train and, and uh, bring on a new generation of managers and farm workers. Can, can I just jump in here because we're running out of time and I, I want to go off of uh, the queue here a little bit, Rich. And one of the, the threads that's weaving its way down the table here is labor. And although your, your labor issues obviously are different 
than Josh's from the standpoint of picking crops that are on the trees. But can you just give us your opinion and take on the, on the people, planet, profit side of things? Obviously, we've got huge challenges with labor. So people, planet, and occasional profit. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know, really it came to the cattle uh, business that I run in Ventura on 7,000 acres. We run about 350 head of mother cows. We run a cow-calf operation, which means we keep a steady herd of cows. We breed them with our own bulls, and the calves are the product that we sell every year. I would have one employee. I would have possibly one employee on that operation to help me. But luckily my predecessors taught me the importance of invasive weed control. We worked really hard on it. We learned to take care of the habitat and the environment. Um, so we were really lucky in the fact that one day we were removing some Arundo from the creek in Sexton Canyon and a fellow from the Watershed Protection District happened to drive up the canyon to the debris base and he said, hey, could you do some of this for us? So now we have 25 wonderful individuals that show up at our yard on the ranch every morning and we go out in the different watersheds and do habitat restoration. And we remove non-native plants and we restore habitats with native plants. We rebuild wildlife habitat and we learned it all right there on the ranch. I learned this from my predecessors. It's the core part of our business. It's really important and we just expanded it to help our urban neighbors through some of their problems in open space areas. So we're really proud to be able to fill that niche. And as far as cowboys, it's really hard to find them here in Ventura County. They don't raise them. <laughs> they, don't, they don't come out of, of Buena High School. <laughs> so we, we've worked hard. We get some cowboys out of Mexico and Texas. But the biggest thing is, is George, stand up. Stand up right there. I'm raising my own cowboys. <laughs> that guy right there, that's, he's half of the future of my agriculture. Yeah. That's part of why he's here today. And, and uh, that guy can rope and ride anything. So he's a great asset. His brother's a great asset. And we all work together with our employees. And the most important thing we've got is our employees there. We all work together. And we're really proud to be part of that. Great, Rich. Well, well you're, you're one of the lucky producers who has a secession plan actually in effect right now. Not all of us are that lucky. But given the short amount of time, and Bonnie, I know that, I mean, you, you told me that I had 10 after 1, and it's 10 after 1 according to my watch. But, you know, one of the key things that, that I, I, I keep thinking about as I'm hearing the panelists talking about what ag is to Ventura County, there is this kind of underlying kind of big elephant in the room, if you will, about misconceptions that the general public have about ag in Ventura County. You know, there's huge misconception about labor, for example. And for those of us who saw, you know, lemons falling on the ground this year because we didn't have the labor to pick them, you know, that there's huge kind of economic uh, impacts that are really just starting to show their, their ugly head and they're heading our way big time. So, you know, we, we've got huge challenges. We at the RCD, you know, realize it's going to be important to do the outreach, try to do that education of the general public wherever we can, and I think this is a great way to start it. If you guys are interested to take this show on the road, I think we probably could do that. But anyway, thank you so much, all you, all you panelists. We really appreciate your, your input today. And if, the, if anyone has any specific questions that you're wanting to, to uh, bring forth, um, please bring them forth to the RCD. Uh, I think, uh, Marty, I think we're going to have a, a means of, of allowing everyone to be able to contact us directly at RCD. Okay, so that's, that'll be our follow-up. Thank you. Let's hear it for Doug Nelson as an amazing moderator. Um, so this was about as real as it gets. You, you can't predict the answers. This really were authentic uh, comments, observations, and feedback from our presenters, our panel today. And we're very, very grateful for that. Wow, oh, that's a good trick. That's a different F word I was thinking of right now. The point is, <laughs> we don't want to leave the conversation on the table today, though. Take that with you. I love the challenge that the panel gave you and said, what does conventional mean to you? What is sustainability? What do we do with this conversation around labor? Don't leave it on the table. Let's continue the conversation together. You've got all of your ag associations in this room. 
let's keep it moving forward. So thank you for listening, and, and please do ask those questions and follow up with the Resource Conservation District. So in the last 15 minutes, it's time to celebrate. We're going to recognize our nominees for this year's award. And uh, Marty Melvin, our Executive Director of the Resource Conservation District, is going to take it from here. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Marty. I've had the amazing, amazing privilege of living in this county for well over 50 years, and I've seen a lot of changes in agriculture. Um, we decided some years ago to recognize these amazing efforts that go on every day by the ag community here, one of our most significant um, business efforts uh, to steward the land, to take care of the resources, to provide food for millions and millions of people here and around the world. And so that's the reason why we have these awards. And every year, of course, the nominees are all worthy uh, of the award, but we only give one. So um, I hope you had a chance to look at these um, amazing posters we had done. But this year's nominees include Craig Underwood, uh, as he said, stated, 30,000 school children coming there on his amazing facility out there in Terra Rahata, um, so that young people learn about the value of agriculture and how things work. I don't know if you saw his uh, display at the farm. It won the Blue Ribbon. Amazing stuff. Esper Peterson, who immigrated here from <laughs> uh, Chicago, owns many acres. Uh, avocado grower uh, also sits atop a, a great watershed and has done a lot of things to preserve uh, and, and recharge those aquifers, talking about water. Phil McGrath, who um, fortunately has lots of uh, recognition in the community, is one of our organic growers. Um, Steve Gill, who I don't know if any of you have been out there, but you want to see the most advanced, technological, amazing um, future ag kind of thing with energy and water and all the stuff he does, um, just amazing. Bill Camarillo, who working together with Harrison, has, has done an amazing job on, on uh, composting and green waste. Uh, Casey Howling, uh, Howling Tomatoes, if you haven't been there, that's a tour. Um, I, I heard the statistic, and Monica will have to verify it, but they grow like 20 times more tomatoes on an acre than anybody can outside. Um, uh, it's just amazing the amount of food they produce on that small footprint. And we were having a discussion about water some time ago, and I said, well, okay, I know they use a lot of water, but how much water are they using per tomato compared to you know, other places? So the, the, this is, again, stewardship, sustainability, things that are the future of farming. And then uh, uh, Jurgen Gramkow uh, of Southland Sod Farm, uh, and, and they, a lot of the land that they own, they've innovated some of the ways that uh, they switch over crops, strawberries, celeries, other things. They have an amazing property up in Ojai. So these are our award nominees. All are very um, worthy of this award, but again, we can only, yes, please. So uh, if the board members that are here present will come up, I'd like to announce that the award, uh, this year's 212 Award for Excellence in Agriculture Stewardship Sustainability goes to Craig Underwood and Underwood Family Farms. <laughs> Get all together here. So, switch over. Move over. Yeah. Good job. I was thinking that effort too. Just a uh, we also take the opportunity, or I take the opportunity each year to. Oh, did you want to say something? Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> I, I think they decided they should give me the award because uh, I think I'm the oldest member of the group and they better do it now. <laughs> we also like to recognize leadership in the community. Um, previous award winners, John Christ and uh, Jim Lloyd Butler. 
This year I'd like to, um, the director's award goes to Steve Gill and Gill's Onions for the amazing stuff they're doing over there. I started my project to uh, eliminate all my waste. Uh, it was really a problem that I wanted to solve, and I didn't do it to win any awards, but I've been recognized a lot for what I've done. <laughs> and, and it's an honor that to, be, um, to be given a leadership award. And um, we, we share our technology with anybody that wants to learn about it and, and expand on it. So we, we have other companies from all over the world coming by to see what we're doing. So. Uh, thanks for the for, thanks for the award. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all for coming. Uh, if you have questions, uh, talk to me or Bonnie or one of the board members. We really appreciate your attendance. And we're really grateful for these wonderful people that provide our food and uh, are great stewards of the land here in Ventura County.